Hello traders, so I just want to do a quick analysis. Uh, we have three most important data points tomorrow, uh, which of course it is uh, early hours of the morning. We have the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. They'll be deciding on their monetary policy. We're not expecting them to pivot. Secondly, we have uh, United States inflation data, of which it's very, very important uh, data point, And I'll get into the reasons why very shortly and then thirdly we have of course the bank of canada interest rate decision right so i'll just be going over uh those three data points and what we expect going into tomorrow into into these actual um fundamental uh data releases tomorrow right and then lastly uh on when on thursday that is we have the ecp which is the Euro european central bank interest rate decision and uh we'll also touch on that as well right so let's get into it. So first things first, let's go on to the economic calendar. Uh, so right here quickly on the spreadsheet. Let's try and uh, find the economic calendar. So let's go to the economic calendar here so that we can see what expectations are for tomorrow, right? Uh, so this is Tuesday, so Wednesday, right? As you can see, Reserve Bank of New Zealand at 4 a.m. They expected to actually decide like, on monetary policy, like I said, and expectations are for them to actually hold interest rates, right? And then at 2.30 p.m. South African time, obviously, uh, we're having inflation data or CPI data for the U.S. Month over month is expected to drop to 0.3%. Headline to drop to 37 from 38 Month over month inflation rate uh, expected to drop to 0 0.3. So similar to the core inflation month over month. And then inflation rate uh, year over year is expected to jump to 3.4, right? That is what is expected there. Probably also has has something to do with the, with the, with the um, energy prices or the oil prices to be specific that we've seen ro run up uh, or rally up in the past couple of uh, weeks, right? Or months. Because remember, core inflation strips out energy. Uh, energy prices as well as food are uh, those volatile items and then headline inflation includes all of that right so that maybe that is why it is expected to jump higher while core inflation is actually expected to creep lower right so that is the expectation that we have going into the into the actual uh, data release right and then 3:45 p.m we'll actually have the bank of canada interest rate decision uh as well as the policy report i think we will also have yeah, FOMC minutes, right? So the minutes for the for the for the meeting that that the FOMC actually had in March will also be getting that. So it's gonna be a really really uh, fundamentally packed day. And then, like I said, uh, on Thursday we have of course something also important: inflation data for China, and then we have ECB uh, interest rate decision as well. And of course, they are also expected not to cut. So all central bank meetings for this week, there are no cuts expected, right? So what does that mean? That means that the market will be paying more attention to the communication that we get from the meetings, whether from the from the actual statement after the meeting or from press conferences, because I think the euro will have an yeah, ECP press conference. So also from the press conference, right? So those are the things that the markets will be paying attention to. So now let us quickly go back to the, to our spreadsheet, right? And then let us uh, let us quickly look at the different economies, right? So important thing to remember as always is that if we are looking at economies, we need to understand that what actually drives markets or what drives currencies, it is the bond markets, right? So the, essentially that the bond markets drives everything. So if the bond markets drive everything, that means that we need to pay attention to the bond market first, but also we need to understand that inflation actually drives bonds, right? Because where inflation is headed, where inflation is expected to go, that also has an effect on uh, the actual bond market, right? So by bond market, I essentially mean the the yields, right? So in the United States, like I said in the video that, that or in the session that we had on Sunday, that in the United States, it is the US 10 year yield, which is the benchmark interest rate, right? So that is the benchmark interest rate that we have. So if we look at the bond markets here, the yields, as you can see, so essentially, let us look at the US first, right? Because of course, like I said, it's a world reserve currency, so it's a bigger economy and uh, anything that happens in the US will impact uh, everything else essentially, right? So let us remove the drawings here. So let us go on the weekly. As you can see, what we, what we had here or the relationship between the yields and the actual currency 
first thing is to understand that the currency always follows the yields. We, we should be familiar with that, right? Interest rates, wherever interest rates are going, that is where the market will go because the market is following interest rates. So essentially, if we look at the US 10 year yield, uh, just open it here because I've added it here as a compare symbol. How do I do that on trading view? So you just click the plus button here, which, which essentially says compare symbol, right? And then you just type it up, whatever symbol, and it will actually display on the chart as well, right? So now we can switch this chart here to actually show a currency, right? So we're gonna, this is the US 10 year yield. So it essentially, it means that it's gonna affect who? The, the US indices, it's gonna affect gold, it's gonna impact Bitcoin, it's gonna impact uh, as well as dollar pairs, right? Euro USD as well, GBP USD. So let us look at USD pairs, for example, right? Let us look at USD JPY. As you can see, obviously the candlesticks, that is who? That is the 10 year yield, because if I hide it, as you can see, it's no longer showing, right? So the actual chart, candlestick chart, which is in black and white, that's the actual currency pair. So if I open up the 10 year yield, as you can see, there is a clear correlation between the two, right? Whenever the 10 year yield is pushing higher, USD JPY is obviously pushing higher. Why? Because the dollar is following the yield. The dollar is following the interest, right? So Remember what I said on Sundays that we work on expectations. Are, are, are interest rates expected to go lower or to go higher? If they're expected to go lower, then that is when we'll see the actual yield falling, right? Or, or dropping in value. But if they're expected to continue remaining higher or pushing higher, that is when you see that the actual yield do what? Start rallying and going higher, right? So if we quickly look at this, in, in October, sorry, not October, but around 2022, it was around this point here. Remember the, the, the green and red candlesticks, that is the 10 year yield, right? So I need us to understand the importance of yields because you can use them on all currency pairs, right? Especially when we're looking to trade currencies, especially the US 10 year yield. Because, why? Because like I said, that everything is pegged above the US 10 year yield, right? Mortgage rate, uh, loan repayment, uh, car financing student loans all of that right it's pegged up uh, it's pegged above that right above their benchmark which is the u.s 10-year bond yield right so they started hiking interest rates when in march 2022 as you can see here and what happened that is when we saw a very huge and strong rally uh, let me do this they started hiking rates when in march here and you can see that is when we saw a what a huge run up in interest rates and then when markets when when the bond yield started pulling back that is when we also saw these retracements on usd jpy right and then eventually when it peaked here around october 2022 and it started falling lower what was happening at that point remember what i said initially i said the bond markets they drive everything, right? But inflation drives the bond market. So what was happening in the United States with regards to inflation at that point, right? So we need to we need to go over these things so that you, you guys can can so that it can stick in your minds that this is what actually drives the market. So let's go into inflation, right? So what was happening around October 2022 when it comes to inflation in the US? As you can see, this is the United States. Inflation was sitting at around 7.7. .7. .7. It had peaked at around 9.1 in june 2022 so it had been falling from july august and then september so july 8.5 august 8.3 september 8.2 and then 7.7 .7, that was in october right so inflation was starting to go lower as you can see previous to that we were only having green numbers month after month after month what 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 does that mean it means that inflation was going up every single month but since june july sorry 2022 inflation was coming out below or lower than the previous month's inflation right in terms of, that is in in terms of the headline figure and as you can see that is why we just had a row or a string of red red uh, cells here because it means that the next month was lower than the previous month right so this is what i mean when i say inflation drives the bond market so what does that mean that now creates a perception or expectations of the fact that interest rates will no longer need to remain higher because we've transitioned from increasing every single month to now decreasing every single month remember three three 
three data points is what formulates a trend or it what it what it what it, it is what actually initiates a trend or what confirms that a possible trend might be in play right and I'll, and I'll and I'll quickly get into the reason why I say this. So that is what we saw. We saw inflation going lower, right? Yes, in 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 core in core inflation was actually going higher, right, for two months. But then it started falling after that, right? So it did not create that sort of third print. If we had a third print and then a fourth print, then it would have established that okay, core inflation is probably stickier than headline inflation. But we saw that actually continue to go lower, right? And then in uh in in around july 2023 that is when we saw headline inflation actually jump up to 3.2 then 3.7 then it held at 3.7 right so it did not increase after that and then it started going lower so the last time we had a a, a new trend actually start to shift was around june was around july 2022 when we had that drop from 9.1 to 8.5 because from there onwards, the market has been going lower. Yes, we'd have those bumps on the road, but then essentially the market has been going lower when it comes to inflation. So why is so now that gives us an understanding of the fact that why did we see the, the stock market actually start to drop around October? Because we've already had October 2022 was because uh, not the stock market, sorry, but uh, why the bond yields actually start to pee or they peaked and they started to drop. Right in October 2022, it was because of that reason of the fact that now markets were expecting that interest rates would go lower. And like I said, currencies follow interest rates and the bond market drives everything. Everything is affected by the bond market. Why? Because the bond market actually decides on the price of money and the price and the price of money affects every asset class, whether it be stocks, it be indices, it be Bitcoin, uh, because Think of think of it this way. This is interest rates, right? So now if interest rates are expected to go lower, the 10 year bond yield, if interest rates are expected to go lower, what does that mean? That means that now consumers will actually have more disposable income because it means that potentially when they do go lower, consumers will now have what? More disposable income because interest rates repayment on loans or debt will actually go down. So now if you're paying maybe for example, uh, let's say, 6,000 6, rand on your mortgage or maybe 6,000 rand on your car financing and now interest rates start going lower and you end up now paying let's say maybe 5,000 you see so now you have that buffer of a thousand rand that is now disposable to you now it's disposable on income or now that is available to you to either spend it or whatever you want to spend uh, and and for some they might then decide okay I'm gonna throw it into the stock market this thousand rand that I have that that is now extra in inverted commas, I'll actually put that in a stock market or I'll put that in the, in the JSE index, right? Or I'll just buy Bitcoin with it, which is why when interest rates are actually falling, stock markets go, go higher because it is opening that possible or that potential window of disposable income. So investors start to position themselves up accordingly. So investors start buying uh, those riskier assets when interest rates start falling or they are anticipated to fall, right? So this is the reason why around June, June 20, not June, but October 2022, interest rates actually peaked, right? The 10-year bond yield and it started going lower, right? And that is what we can see with the dollar USD JPY because it pretty much mimics with the move that we're seeing here, right? So now, like I said, when they go lower, the impact on 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 um, on the stock markets, the impact on gold, the impact on uh, bond on on uh, Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies is that now investors start putting their money there because they, like I said, if you've been paying six thousand and now you're paying five thousand in your mortgage, that means that potentially you can take the thousand rands uh, that you now have that is extra and you can invest it or you can buy Bitcoin or you can put it in the stock market. So there is a possibility of capital flowing into the stock market because interest rates are going lower and consumers have more disposable income. They're going to spend. Then the demand of goods and services will go higher. Then, of course, businesses will also increase their profit returns because now there's more people who are able to buy their goods and services essentially because they now have disposable income so that is just the whole cycle of it right just the basic understanding of it so around october when that happened uh when we saw the the, the actual declining of the 10-year bond yield the dollar obviously went weaker because it follows the actual yield but then if we look at the stock market so let us look at the stock market let us look at s p 500 right as you can see, on S&P 500, 
it was actually doing the exact opposite so when when the when the when the bond yields was actually rallying up remember the bond yields is the green and red candlesticks right chart so when it was actually going up as you can see s p 500 or the stock market indice was actually going lower and then it also bottomed out around october what was the reason because of inflation that is why inflation is so important for us to understand when it comes to to fundamentally being sound and being up to date and being on the know of what is happening or what to expect to anticipate for the specific economy right and then of course when when yields started going lower that is when we the the stock market actually bottomed out and it starts going higher why because like i said there's possibility of disposable income for businesses for consumers because if interest rates do go lower then it will open up uh then then it means all loans will go lower right loan repayments that are not on a fixed term on a, on a fixed interest rate right so mortgage loans um credit card loans student student debt loans uh car financing loans all those loans will actually go lower in terms of loan repayment interest when interest rates are being cut so that means that people can now potentially invest in the stock market because they now have that disposable income that initially was going to paying loan interest but now since loan interest is going lower they can now take that excess cash and actually spend it somewhere so essentially consumer spending will go higher right and remember if 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 the, if, if businesses do not have consumer or if consumers do not have money to spend then businesses will suffer right so that is how it is right and remember indices are just what i just a collection of businesses s p 500 it is the 500 biggest companies in the us essentially right and nest 100 it's the 100 tech companies as us 30 it is the what it is the 30 companies in the us so that is how we just look at it right so that is why it bottomed out and it started going up why because of inflation right inflation like i said drives the bond market but the bond market drives everything right so then what happened here we also saw it start to fall lower why around around uh july 2020 around july 2023 it's what i explained to you it's what i showed to you right excuse me what did we see in july 2023 headline inflation started going up from three percent to 3.2 to 3.7 right so now we had two higher readings we had a string of red of red cells and now we have two green cells right so what was now the possible uh the possibility was that maybe now inflation is rebounding and going higher so what does that what does that make the central bank do or the fed to actually do the fed to actually become or to, for the fed to come out hawkish and be like okay we think we're gonna continue increasing interest rates and we'll keep interest rates higher because inflation seems to be rebounding and going higher now and what does that do when they say that they're gonna keep infl uh, interest rates higher it results in the 10-year bond deal going higher because now expectations are for what are for that interest rate to go higher interest rates are going to go higher what does that mean for consumers no 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 disposable income right because which means that they'll actually instead of going lower loan repayments will actually go higher right in terms of interest repayment so that means that there will be no disposable income it will actually in, eat into more of the income that they currently have so which means that they won't have money to be buying stocks or to be putting in stock in the stock market to be buying bitcoin to be buying all whatever they want to buy right so it means that also businesses will suffer then what does that mean for the stock market it, it should go lower right investors start selling because there is possibility that interest rates will continue to go higher because we saw that rebound in inflation around to around june july 2023 right and then that is what happened it continued to go lower and then it bottomed out at around october 23 2023 what was happening around that time same thing it goes back to inflation as you can see september so august 3.7 september 3.7 october 3.2 right so now it started giving a lower print so what 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 did the market view it as that this was just a bump on a downward trend in inflation so it was just a slight bump or a slight hump on a downward trend of inflation and that is why the market then positioned that okay which means that uh the central bank will actually con will actually stick to actually cutting interest rates because inflation is now showing that it is going low and like i said we need three readings for a solid trend to be established right so that is what we had and that is why 
then it bottomed out and it started rallying higher right and it brings us to where we are today so this like i said whenever the bond yield goes 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 lower the stock market goes higher bitcoin goes higher and then obviously gold also goes higher right let us look at bitcoin quickly before we now get to inflation data that we are expecting on tomorrow for the united states right so if you look at bitcoin similar 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 move as as we saw as we as we saw with the stock market right so around october when okay let's let's start in so around november towards the end of november towards the end of 2021 when interest rates were being expected because interest rates started being expected to go higher in the us in 2021 i started looking to buy the dollar in 2021 because that was my expectation so what did we see in bitcoin because of that expectation bitcoin started going lower right and then eventually bitcoin bottomed out after october around october november when what i just what what we just explained uh previously right in the in, in the other examples right because why because inflation was actually falling right it had peaked at 9.1 and it was falling so markets were expecting that interest rates would go lower so it means that consumers will be able to do what to invest in bitcoin to buy bitcoin to buy risky asset to buy the stock market and that is why we saw stock market bottoming out and then bitcoin also bottoming out so same thing that we explained in in uh that we explained uh, for indices it plays out the same way to what to the actual uh bitcoin as well because it's also a risky asset and then of course this huge rally that we had was because of the watch because of the bitcoin etf uh that we had uh actually launched or that was approved by the sec this year in 2024 and that resulted in a massive influx i think over seven billion i think in one day if i'm not mistaken uh actually of influx of capital into the into 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 bitcoin right and then it resulted in this huge rally right but of course it also goes hand in hand with the fact that they this the the, the bank um the federal reserve have has or jerome powell has actually been reiterating that the interest rates will go down in 2024 right right maybe not not yet or not in the next meeting that we're having in may but interest rates will definitely be going down when in 2024 so markets are expecting that interest rates will be going lower right and if we also go back to the spreadsheet here if we look at the rate forecast uh this the uh, that i got from uh think ing we can see that expectations are for interest rates to be going lower in the second half of 2024 right as you can see right and then continue to go lower right so interest rate expectations uh, for interest rates to go lower so that also what does that mean that makes the that makes bitcoin to rally stock markets to also rally like we've seen right so now when we now that we have an understanding of the importance of inflation it is now let us look at where inflation actually sits for the dollar currently right so let us go back to our spreadsheet let us look at inflation we can see that inflation jump to 3.4 3.1 now 3.2 so the trend of inflation is not steady right now what do they expect tomorrow they expect inflation to come in at 3.4 right so if inflation does actually come in at 3.4 then we would have two readings that show an increase something that would be similar to what we experienced in july 23 right so if inflation does actually come in greater than what is expected or it comes in at 3.4 which would be higher than the previous reading or let's say maybe in 3.5 3.6 then it would have a similar what a similar impact to what we saw around july 2023 because what happened around july 2023 that is when we saw what that is when we saw the actual uh 10-year bond yield actually rally and that is when we saw as you can see bitcoin started going lower start bitcoin started pulling back because it meant that possibly inflation is sticky because we've had two readings that are uh to the upside possibly inflation is sticky so that means that maybe interest rates will need to stay higher for longer which is negative for bitcoin and obviously which is also negative for the stock market right as you can see as well uh, s p 500 actually fell around july so that is that is our game plan going into tomorrow right when it comes to 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 inflation right that if it actually does increase uh the headline from 3.2 and it goes to 3.4 or higher then we might see a what a sell-off in the what in the in in uh, in the stock market sell-off in bitcoin sell-off on gold as well right uh let us look at gold as well the correlation that we have with gold when it comes to uh the actual 10-year yield right so as you can see with gold as well around july 
2023 when inflation had given two upward print or increasing prints on the headline side and then there was a possibility of a third figure actually showing that inflation is sticky what happened gold fell gold fell because gold also goes in the opposite direction to bond yield so gold stock markets and bitcoin it's something that we look to invest in whenever interest rates are expected to go lower but if interest rates are expected to continue going higher then bond then then stock market bitcoin as well as gold generally falls or it pulls back right so this is what this is this is the game plan that we have for the united states going into tomorrow and i wanted to start with the united states so that you have an understanding of when we go into the actual other currencies why we are approaching it this way right so that is the game plan for tomorrow that if it does go actually if inflation actually comes in greater than what is expected uh then we could see what we could see a sell-off right so now let us look at the daily here let us look at uh let us do a quick technical analysis let us look at the daily here okay we can see we had a pullback on the daily when it comes to uh the actual yield because this is something that i've also just realized now because the yield the market follows the yield so we should wait for the yield to give us a pullback and then if we are looking to continue buying the dollar let's say in this case if inflation comes in greater then the dollar will rally right and then if, if we have a pullback now on the or, or on the 10 year yield on the daily so then we could potentially look for buying opportunities on the dollar right if also if inflation comes in greater than what is expected so that is the game plan going into tomorrow a possible buy on the dollar that is the plan that we have going into tomorrow right so now let us do a quick analysis on some dollar pays right so let us look at usd usd jpy so usd jpy we had a okay let me let me hide my because we we pretty much almost done with the with the bond yield so now let us look at currencies right usd jpy usd jpy is at the highs here we had a bearish close on usd jpy let us look for a a a a, a, a um uh sorry a demand level so let us start on the actual daily time frame let us see if we have a demand level on the daily time frame we actually have one here right so it's part of this one here so this bullish engulfing here so this is the level that we have here if we go into the four hour anything that we can find uh, nothing on the four hour on the one hour anything that we can find here uh, not really nothing there as well right so uh, let us see yeah nothing there as well so essentially it would be it would be that daily that daily that's this daily supply if i were if i were looking to buy okay in this one hour this one hour level as well right so this one hour demand zone that we have here as well so that is the game plan going into usd jpy for tomorrow if we obviously if we do get bullish a bullish reading then i'll be expecting usd jpy to fall and then i'll be looking i'll be looking to buy around this region i'm not saying it should fall and get here but this is what i'll be looking to buy right so now let us go into usd chf let us see what is happening with usd chf because of course this the swiss franc is weak right not yeah the swiss franc is weak we are looking to go short go long or, or go short the swiss franc and buy all the other economies right so now we have a bearish close on the daily right of, of the swiss franc so now let us look for supply and and okay demand levels in this case because we're looking to buy so let us look here on the daily so here's a demand on the daily that we have here right and then let us go into the four hour see if we can refine it even further so on the four hour on the four hour we have we also have this beauty one this beautiful one here right on the four hour this beautiful uh demand zone here of which i think this this would be possibly be the most ideal one to go to go uh to go long at let us see the weekly open uh this is daily so this was tuesday this was monday so the weekly open is above yeah so perfect yeah so when it comes to when it comes to uh when it comes to uh usd chf these are the levels we'll be looking to buy so this daily demand and obviously if we push lower this four hour demand around 0 0.899 right so if i do get an entry there then i'll be looking to go long right so as you can see 
this is now how 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 easy it becomes when I actually come onto the actual chart because I started with the bond market, looked at inflation, what actually drives uh, the economies, right? And then, like I said as well, or not like I said, but also something to remember is that all the other data also 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 actually contributes, right? All the other dates okay we'll go we'll, i'll get to that at the end so that we can finish up the technical analysis of the dollar um usd china i'm not really looking to trade usd china usd mexico no usd czar usd cad no say usd jpy as well as usd chf are the most uh lucrative one especially when it comes to the interest rate side of thing because there's an interest rate spread there then the next one would be euro usd right let us look at euro usd let's look at the weekly weekly time frame we actually had a pullback on the weekly when it comes to euro usd so let us actually remove this drawing so we had a pullback on the weekly let us look for a level of uh, supply we don't have any on the daily let us go to the four hour excuse me so on the four hour we actually had this level oh sorry let us go to the daily to see if we had a excuse me guys uh, a bullish uh okay no on the daily we did not have a bullish uh a bullish close so definitely not looking to sell euro euro usd in this case so i won't even bother doing any technical analysis right on it oh i'm actually in that position that we that we took on euro usd which is a sell position but essentially this would be this this was a level here this uh supply level and then of course this is where I'd be, i would have been looking for price to retest and then possibly look for shorting positions right so yeah that is what we have there on on euro usd so it pretty much it's usd chf as well as usd jpy right and then let us look at uh not looking to sell aud usd because aud is relatively strong so let us go to gbp usd let us quickly analyze gbp usd and see on the daily time frame do we have a bullish close yeah we do have a bullish close on the daily time frame on the weekly time frame we also had a bullish close let us check for supply levels right let us check for supply levels um, okay uh, no we don't really have anything right as you can see here on the that we don't really have anything there yeah, we don't really have anything here in terms of supply levels so we're also going to ignore that so so far on the on inflation the game plan for cpi us cpi it is to look for buying opportunities on usd jpy as well as usd chf and then uh okay let us go on to indices right because we also said that indices go in the opposite direction to the bond yield right so if inflation comes in higher then it means that in interest rates should stay higher for longer that means that that's a negative for stock market, negative for Bitcoin, negative for uh, gold as well. So let us look at um, the stock market real quick. Do a quick analysis of the stock market and let's see what we have, right? So it actually closed bullish, mm, which is pretty much, which is pretty interesting. But before we do that, let us quickly look at, let us look at the volatility index. Uh, volatility index actually closed bearish right which is which goes obviously they go in opposite direction to the stock market they actually it actually closes close bearish so it means there is a possibility of it pushing higher right because it's also a pullback right so now let us go back to nas as you can see nas uh, it closed higher it closed bullish on the daily of which that is what we'd be looking for because remember usd jpy usd chf actually close bearish right so they are giving us buying opportunities for this for this guy nasdaq he actually close bullish so as you can see this is my uh, this was tuesday this was monday right so the weekly open is somewhere here right so that is the weekly open or actually let me use uh, a trend line to actually delineate the weekly open right so this is the week this is the weekly open so anything above that will that is when we're looking to sell so where do we have our level of supply pretty much right in front of us right we have this level right here of which it also coincides with this level that we have right here let's actually put this horizontal ray right here right so anywhere around this area obviously it needs to be above yesterday's high so let's go into the four hour to check it out even more so i think maybe a run up maybe a, a stop hunt of this high 
yeah i think on nasdaq maybe 18 18,387 so if we get price or if we see price actually i think it run this high and then actually continue pushing lower so this is the game plan for nasdaq as well so let me let me actually put it on the on the watch list uh then let us go into us 30 let us look at the weekly on us 30 as well okay weekly open so this is the weekly open there of course it's q i'll straighten it up but we have a a bearish close on the weekly so that is signaling a pullback right it's signaling a pullback on the weekly time frame obviously if we were looking to buy we'd be looking at this level right here which is the weekly uh, which is this weekly demand level right here right that is where we'll be looking to buy. then if we go into daily right to see if we had a bullish close we definitely did not have a bullish close instead we had a bearish close right when it comes to us 30 so us 30 could be a contingency plan what do i mean by contingency plan that if inflation comes out greater than ex sorry below or undershoots the 3.4 that is expected and the 3.2 which is the previous reading let's say it comes in at three percent that means that what interest rates will be going higher that would be the confidence because remember the federal reserve said they need more confidence that inflation is falling so any figure that is below 3.2 which is the previous reading that would be giving who the federal reserve in confidence that inflation is actually falling right so the game plan would be here so this would be a contingency plan if inflation actually undershoots and it comes in below what is expected because that would mean what that would mean that um that would mean that um us 30 could potentially what could potentially dip into this level and then push higher right so that is the game plan right put a potential game plan not really a fan of being double-minded or looking for buying on the on on, on uh, at, at one point and then switching our buyers to looking to selling no this is just a contingency plan obviously the data will, will guide us and also remember what the federal reserve said they have a dual mandate which means that they are they are they are tasked with getting inflation towards two percent target as well as um, uh, ensuring maximum employment right and we saw that in as much as the data was mixed on friday or it, it actually if you look at the details it was actually weak uh when it comes to nfp but it does not change the fact that unemployment dropped to 3.8 from 3.9 right so that means that the labor market is essentially still tight right it might not be as inflationary but it is essentially tight because remember maximum employment is anywhere in the regions of four to five percent between four and five percent right so it's relatively still below um that 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 range of four to five percent right so this is just what we have on on us 30 not really focusing that much on buying but of obviously if the date yeah probably i won't even buy the reason why like i said because vix closed bearish right if vix had closed bullish then it would have it would have presented that opportunity to actually buy us 30 so i'm not gonna buy us 30 so i'll just focus on nasdaq looking to go short nasdaq because it goes in line with what we saw with usd jpy as well as uh as well as uh usd chf right then let us go into s p 500 look at the daily real quick so if you look at the daily similar to what we saw with uh with the nasdaq the weekly open is around this level here uh, so the weekly open is around this level here and then of course we had a bullish close on the daily which is what we want and then let us look at some supply levels right so we have this supply level here nothing else on the daily time frame let us go into the four hour and see if we can we have any that we can refine it is this one here so similar similar game plan that i think we might see if we do get a positive figure which will be bullish the dollar right also run this high and then push lower right so that is also this is also the game plan for nasdaq right so let us that as well and then obviously let us look at gold real quick let's look at gold let us look at the daily time frame 
and gold daily time frame did not close bearish of course weekly time frame also did not close bearish so there's nothing there on gold there's no setup uh, let us look at uh, XAU USD uh, no setup as well right actually it closed bullish so there could be a possible setup let's look at the four hours look at the okay we'll, we'll I'll analyze gold and silver uh, as we head as we head closer towards the meeting right so as we head closer towards the release of the inflation figure so around inflation when when does the the, the latest four hour close so the latest for the the four hour candle will close at 11 so after 11 that is when we'll have a clearer picture of what is happening right or with when it comes to gold and uh when it comes to gold and silver right so that is what we have there bitcoin let us look at bitcoin let us see bitcoin actually dropped and pulled back of which it essentially it it is opposite to what we saw to what we saw on um on the on the on the us 10 or, or on the on the us on the in the us 10 year yield right which is the the actual benchmark rate uh because it is actually pulling lower but bitcoin is also pulling lower right so when it comes to bitcoin really depending as well if inflation actually comes in if inflation comes in greater than what is expected right because like I said, let us go, let us go back here real quick. If you if if you might have not if you might have missed it, expectations are for inflation to come in at three point four. So what does that mean? That is dependent on the figure that we get tomorrow. But if we eliminate the figure that we could that we that we that we that we that we, that we are expecting tomorrow, so if we remove this figure here three point four, what does that leave us with? It leaves us with inflation that is going lower. Yes, it has bumpy roads where we have one month that goes up but the next month also goes lower right so it's just a bumpy road down towards uh, the two percent target right so that is what we are seeing right here when it comes to the united states inflation and that is why i say that it is me looking to buy the dollar and sell everything else against the dollar so the stock market uh nasdaq and it is dependent or it depends on the on the figure that we get if we get a positive figure then obviously i'll be looking to take those trade ideas but if we exclude this figure and work with what we currently have it favors interest rates not to go higher because inflation is going lower that's just it right so i just wanted to explain that so that it makes more sense when i'm highlighting what i mean here on bitcoin right so as you can see this is the open the weekly open and then this is the demand level that we have here let us look at the weekly any demand it lines up with this weekly demand as you can see this was a bullish engulfing it's a weekly demand so we'll just use the daily one because it's pretty much still fresh <clears throat> let us go into the four hour let us see on the four hour we also have we also have yeah this one this demand on the four hour so let me just use the horizontal ray so we also have this four hour demand right here right so this is would be an, an area of interest to actually buy bitcoin if we actually get inflation data that undershoots right that means that interest rates should we should continue to expect interest rates to go lower and that will not push back against interest rate cuts if the data the inflation data does not push back against interest rate cuts then that is when we should look to buy bitcoin right so obviously i would look for price depending here so if we do have okay why well, uh, maybe you might also be asking yourself why do i like we saw nasdaq as well as us uh, s p 500 that i'm expecting it to run the highs on the four hour before falling was okay one of the reasons is generally it runs a four hour low if it's going to buy or it runs a four hour high if it's going to sell right so it will depend right right now but if price let's say price looks like this and then it just continues falling if you look left there's no swing low on the four hour that price needs to stop hunt or run before pushing higher except for this one so that is why i would expect price to run this low first and then only look for buying opportunities once we've spiked below this low right so that is what i that's that is what we we that is what i'll be looking at unless 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 if price does this unless if now we price continues to push higher and then now this becomes a swing low and then we see a sharp drop into this and it gives me a buy opportunity then i'll just take it higher right so this is the reason why right so those are the two scenarios but i'm looking for a buy on 
Bitcoin. That is what that is essentially the 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 the, the mandate that we have there that we're looking for buying opportunities on Bitcoin, right? So let me also add it onto our watch list, right? So that is what we have there for the United States because we understand that inflation data will actually be market moving. It will be market moving because inflation drives the bond market. The bond market drives everything, but inflation actually drives who? It drives the bond market, right? So yeah, Bitcoin could be a nice buying opportunity, right? Bitcoin could be a very, very nice buying opportunity. But that is what we have for the dollar, right? That is what we have for the dollar uh, going into tomorrow's uh, CPI report or CPI release, right? So now let us quickly go over that the other three essentially, which is the Reserve Bank of New Zealand as well as uh, the Bank of Canada, right? So starting off first things first, we're going to look at um, interest rate forecast. They also forecast, of course, to go lower eventually, but not cut sooner like all the other economies. Why? Because if we look at inflation, as you can see, Australia inflation is currently sitting at 4.1. Core is sitting at 4.2. New Zealand core is sitting at 4.4. Headline is sitting at 4.7, right? So what does that mean? That means that inflation is still pretty high. Why? Because if we look at the central bank target, let's go into the master tab. If we look at the central bank target for New Zealand, as you can see, 2%. Inflation is currently at 4.7 as well as 4.4, which is one of the highest uh, if you obviously ex uh, exclude South Africa. <coughs> Sorry about that. If we obviously, uh, let me have a sip of water. So, yeah, guys, so if you exclude South Africa's inflation, then of course New Zealand is the highest, right, when it comes to headline inflation, and then uh, Mexico is the highest when it comes to core inflation. But if you exclude South Africa and Mexico here, then we have GBP, which will be the highest, right? But essentially, you see, it's pretty much still high. It's double the 2% target. So definitely, they're not going to look to cut interest rates, even though their economy is deteriorating because we saw that they dipped into a what? A shallow recession in the third quarter in the fourth quarter sorry or the second half of 2023 this is with regards to new zealand because they we having their interest rate hikes first not interest rate hikes but their meeting will be early hours of the morning that's the first meeting they will have right so what does that mean are we bullish are we bearish right of course let us look at the inflation figures right because in as much as we know that the bond market drives everything but inflation drives the bond market so what how has inflation been tracking right so let us start when did they start increasing interest rates let us go back to interest rates so that we can see when the reserve bank of new zealand actually started increasing interest rates it was back in it was back in 2021 i remember just that i'm not sure if it was november or So it would be December, November, October. So it would be October 2021. They they moved from 0 0.25 to 0 0.5. So they started hiking in October 2021. They were pretty much one of the central banks to start hiking. Uh, of course, including Mexico. Uh, but yeah, they were one of the central banks to actually start raising rates, right? Uh, or, or the early adopters of interest rate hiking cycle. Reserve Bank of New Zealand, right? So they had been hiking rates since then. So October 2021, what, what was inflation doing around that time? <clears throat> October 2021, inflation had moved from 1.1, 1.1 in the beginning of 2021, it had moved from 1.1, oh, sorry, this is Australia, it had moved from 1.5 to 3.3, then to 4.9. So when they started hiking interest rates, inflation had jumped to 4.9, which was more than double their target, right? So it was three readings that were, that were, that were going higher, 1.5 to 3.3, that is one, and 4.9, that is two. That is, yeah, that is essentially the third reading. Then, because I don't have 2020 here, but it, it, it had already started creeping higher at that point. So as you can see, we had already had three readings that were in showing an increase in, in in inflation. So what were the market 
market expectations of interest rates in the in the New Zealand or New Zealand interest rates were that they were going to go higher, right? So that means that it would support who? It would support the New Zealand dollar, right? So obviously inflation kept on tracking higher until it peaked at 7.3, which was in uh, April 2022, right? So a couple of months after they had started hiking interest rates, October, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So after seven months or six months of hiking interest rates, uh, of course, they were not hiking every single month, but I'm just saying since they started hiking interest rates, there is when inflation peaked at 7.3 and then it has been going lower ever since. And then currently it sits at 4.7, right? So let us see from January 2023, it was sitting at 6.7. Now it's at 4.7. So inflation is going lower, but it is sticky. It is persistent, right? So we're not really dovish. We're not really bearish on 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 um, on the New Zealand dollar, right? Let us look at something like unemployment data. Let us go back to the most. Or let us look at. Let us actually look at it on here just to track it and see how it's going. So from 3.2, so beginning of 2023, it was at 3.4. Now it's at 4.7. So in unemployment is actually going higher, which is also which shouldn't really contribute to inflation. It should actually help in the inflation fight, right? But essentially, what is how, how can you sum up everything here? We can sum up everything on the fact that if we look at, because remember, like I said, inflation drives the bond market. So what is inflation doing? Of course, inflation is not falling. It is sticky. It is going lower, but it is sticky, right? If you look at bond, if you look at interest rates, they are high, right? Pretty much one of the high, one of the highest uh together with the united states when it comes to the developed economies right and then central bank side let us look at uh central bank side of course they still they still maintained in there they actually came in not as hawkish as previously uh but they maintained the fact that uh the inflation still remains sticky uh and inflationary pressures remain persistent and all of that so they still maintain that sort of uh hawkish position right uh, even though they want they weren't as hawkish as the previous meeting so now what does that mean that means that relatively we are not really bearish slightly i'd say slightly bullish to neutral when it comes to new zealand dollar right so let us look at new zealand real quick so let us look at the new zealand 10 year uh, okay uh okay let me do this here actually <laughs> So that we can we can actually use use the actual chart for currencies right so it's gonna be nz nz 10y so the new zealand 10-year yield and then let us open that up and then now let us focus on currency so when it comes to new zealand if possibly we're looking to buy let's say they come out hawkish in tomorrow's meeting because inflation still still remains persistent guys you see you saw inflation is still pretty high right uh still sitting at around four percent or lingering at around four percent which is double the two percent target and remember they started hiking when inflation was had jumped slightly above four percent so it's still pretty high because they did not tolerate it when it got to four percent that is when they started hiking so it's still pretty high it's still around the same level where they at which they actually considered hiking interest rates even though it has came down from the seven from the regions of seven but it's still pretty high so looking for interest rate cuts is not really on the table maybe the language that they might use might be perceived as being dovish by the markets but that is just about it nothing else right so let us look at uh <clears throat> so let us let us do this let us move this guys so as you can see here this is that let us go to the daily time frame so as you can see nzd jpy let us compare it to nzd jpy the same way that we did with uh usd jpy this is new zealand against the japanese yen and then of course we have the actual bond yield right this is the daily time frame this is the daily time frame And as you can see, it's pretty much pretty much goes in a similar fashion. When one goes up, the other one goes. It it mimics because it's a bond. It's a it's a New Zealand bond yield, and the base currency here is New Zealand. So whenever it goes up, New Zealand goes up. Whenever it goes lower, New Zealand goes lower. Even though it does not fall in the same magnitude, 
but essentially it mimics it whenever as you can see the green and yet the green and red candlesticks whenever they start pushing higher new zealand japanese yen pushes higher whenever it starts going lower new zealand japanese yen falls lower right so in this sense in this in this in this sort of particular instance right if we're looking at the let's see on the weekly new zealand let's say tomorrow they come out actually hawkish right or they come out yeah pretty much hawkish then let us look at nzd jpy because of course in as much as the japanese yen is hiking interest rates but the, the interest rate differentials here they still support a carry trade right so we have a bearish close on the on the on the new zealand 10-year bond yield so that means that that's a pullback then we can obviously look for potential buying opportunities of the new zealand dollar in this regard right so this is what we have nzd uh in this case there's no bearish close on the daily so obviously not looking to consider buying new zealand against the japanese yen maybe new zealand chf uh nothing on new zealand chf as well right so there's nothing pretty much there right so um yeah there's not there's, there's pretty much nothing when it comes to new zealand chf nzd cad yeah nothing also there right so that is pretty much what we have with new zealand maybe it might if we do have if we do have a um what do you call this if we do have a disappointment and the and the message is actually dovish from the reserve bank of new zealand then obviously i wouldn't really look to sell new zealand against the swiss or new zealand against the japanese yen right uh maybe new zealand against the dollar uh but obviously if the if, if dollar news also comes out okay we'll have the reserve bank of new zealand meeting earlier uh but in this case I'd probably look to take it as a day trade, not really, not necessarily as a swing trade because interest rate differentials here are uh, uh, relatively zero. There's nothing here, so we might even get charged a negative swap for holding it. So I wouldn't really be be looking at at trading this. But we can look at you. We can look at other currencies that are weaker, essentially against the euro, against New Zealand. Sorry, like Euro NZD. Uh, but Euro NZD has been falling, so there's no. There's no pullback as well as you can see on the daily it has been falling there's no pullback uh which other currency um aud nzd no A aud is relatively is relatively strong as well so essentially yeah maybe maybe just day trades uh depending because i will be up to actually watch the meeting and the interest rate decision so if maybe there are some short-term trades or opportunities based on the outcome that we get then i'll, I'll look to take it there but essentially data does not support a cut of interest rates maybe they might change their their messaging to be slightly dovish their communication but when it comes to inflation inflation is not supportive of a cut in interest rates right and then lastly uh not really lastly uh second to last we're gonna look at canada right let us look at canada so if we look at canada we're currently at uh inflation for canada So if you look at unemployment for Canada, unemployment has been going higher, right? As you can see, now sitting at 6.1. In the beginning of January 2023, uh, Canada, the Bank of Canada, they also started hiking interest rates around March 2022, right? So at that point, around March 2022, let's actually go into the interest rates tab so that we can actually talk about something that we're sure of. So around March... 2022 as you can see they had their first hike from 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 right and then interest rates had been going up ever since then let us look at uh unemployment and then we'll come back to 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 the actual uh inflation right unemployment was at three point was at 5.3 when they started increasing interest rates and then of course it lingered around the five four four 4.9 5 percent regions and then now it has jumped up to 6.1 right so unemployment is increasing there is weakness in the labor market right since so it means that interest rates they are having an impact right on the tightness of the labor market and then 
if we look at inflation though let us look at inflation since march 2022 canadian inflation was sitting at 6.7 uh core was sitting at 5.5 and now and then it was it continued increasing and then like you as you can see we've been having a string of red 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 cells which means that it has been decreasing every single month and of course we'll have bumps along the road but essentially if you look at the longer term trend since march 20 since let's say since let's say july 2022 it has just been going it's been it's been one side one way right going down going lower going lower going lower and then currently it sits at 2.8 so when they started increasing interest interest rates it was at 7.7 .7, now it's at 2.8 core is at 2.1 if we look at the inflation target for the bank of uh, canada it's one to three percent so as you can see one to three percent which means that two percent is the actual midpoint right two percent is the actual midpoint uh for 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 the bank of canada when it comes to the inflation target 2.1 percent 2.8 percent so they are relatively close really 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 close to 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 actual uh to their inflation target rate forecast obviously they also expected or anticipated to actually cut interest rates um, so as you can see the bank of canada they actually expected to cut interest rates are sitting at around four percent towards the end of uh, 2024 so that would be currently from five percent there would be one percent cut right in interest rates or a hundred basis points worth of interest rate cuts right so that would really be hefty if that were to actually happen but this is just forecast right doesn't mean this is how it will happen right so that means that there is a possibility of being of having weakness of the canadian dollar are, are we expecting them to cut interest rates no we're not expecting them to cut interest rates in today in two okay now it, now it's already on the 10th so today we're not expecting them to cut interest rates but maybe their message moving forward could signal a dovish shift because market market pricing is currently pricing in that they will cut interest rates in the june meeting right as well as for the ecp they are also expected to cut interest rates in june but if you look at the data look at inflation unemployment is creeping up inflation is headed towards the two percent target even though the cpi trimmed which is their preferred measure of inflation for the bank of canada that is sitting at three three percent so that is slightly around the upper band of the one to three percent target of which it's also not too high right so there is an element of dovishness uh that i am expecting from the bank of canada just based on that cutting rates no it would be too extreme but i think they will signal that maybe they will they will now they have now started engaging in discussions of cutting interest rates because in the previous meeting they completely dismissed they didn't even entertain the idea of cutting interest rates so maybe now we'll have that because inflation has actually fallen 2.1 and 2.8 that's relatively close to the two percent uh midpoint of the 1.3 of the one to three percent target range right so that is what we have there when it comes to uh the bank of canada right so something that though to take note of or something to also pay attention to is the fact that oil has been going up right and we understand that canada is a huge exporter of oil so as long as oil prices remain supported then canada will definitely benefit from that right so there is just a side note to also pay attention to but i am expecting some weakness uh, from the canadian dollar like I said, I'm not expecting them to cut, but I am expecting a dovish, a, a, a very dovish message uh, coming out from the Bank of Canada, right? So let us go and look at Canada. Let us look at CAD. Let us look at CAD. So, <clears throat> so in this case, if we were to try and trade CAD, 5% uh, interest, maybe GBP CAD. Let us see what is happening with GBP CAD. Okay, GBP CAD has been rallying, so yeah, no. Essentially, essentially, this would also depend on how we'd have to see at around 11, 11, uh, 11 a.m. when we have the four-hour close in terms of how market has actually developed during the London session. Excuse me, for us to actually have a, a to be able to take a, a a proper decision. But of course, the main event will is gonna be the US CPI, like I like, I, which is why I started with it. Because it has more potential than all the other because of course interest rates are not expected to be cut 
I doubt they would come out with a with a surprise interest rate cut, right? But if they do, if they do, uh, let us see who can who can we actually sell the Canadian dollar against? Like I said, I'm expecting weakness for the CAD guys. Uh, I'm just being honest. I'm expecting weakness for from the CAD. As you can see, this is CAD. This is the this is the ten year of the CAD of the Canadian dollar. So let us let us change this guy here and say CA 10 Y so we're done with New Zealand so we can switch that <clears throat> and then on the chart we actually have cat JPY right just to show you that once again the, the 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 bond market is what actually drives currencies right so the bond market is what actually drives currencies right bond markets is what drives currencies we had a bearish close a bearish pullback on the 10 year on the canadian 10 year bond yield we had a bearish close there right so that means that is a pullback on the daily time frame right so if we look at cat jpy if let's say they come out and they are hawkish then we can look to buy cat jpy in this sense right so it it would sort of line up because remember cat cat and the dollar they almost go in the same direction and obviously understandable understandable why uh, but they almost go in the same direction so cat JPY let us close uh, this one here because we're done with that we can see that I'm sure you guys saw the correlation uh, when one goes up the other one the other one follows suit when when the 10 year when the 10 year Canadian bond yield actually goes lower and the Japanese yen strengthens against it, right? And it, yeah, it's pretty much what we saw with all the other economies, right? So, since the bond market drives markets and then inflation, inflation is actually headed towards the 2% target, right? So, in this case, if we're looking at the daily, the daily actually closed bearish, right? So, what does that mean? That means if, if there is or if the outcome is actually hawkish and it's not dovish, then we can look to buy right we can position ourselves to actually buy and this is obviously a what this is a demand level on the daily if we go into the four hour <clears throat> if we go into the four hour if there is no if there is no swing low that actually forms on the four hour here and the market just starts to fall then i'd obviously expect it or anticipate that it would run this low right here right so it would run this low that we have right here and then it will push higher so also this when it comes to cat jpy it's also dependent on the outcome of the meeting that we'll get right so it's not it's not like uh us in cpi right of which it would we can put two and two together there right like we saw with bitcoin but for this one it's all dependent on the outcome of the actual meeting so cat jpy would be would be so would be a, a currency to look at cat chf let's see on the daily since we had a pullback on the 10-year yield as you can see cat chf on the daily as well also close bearish uh do we have a supply sorry a demand level uh really no we don't okay except for this this for this one that we have here this is the level that we have here on the one hour let us see on the four hour if there is a swing that can be that the market can run. <clears throat> oh, let us look at the almost forgot the weekly open. So this was Monday. So weekly open was relatively at the same level here, right? So if we're looking to buy, we need to buy below the weekly open, or we'd have mark. Yeah, we'd need to buy below the weekly open, right? <clears throat> then it's relatively here right so this one uh it's really iffy unless if we look at unless if we look at these levels here right unless if we look at let's go back to the four hour this level here unless if we look at this four hour this four hour this four hour demand here then that would sort of give us more of a pullback lower in price right 
and then pushing higher. <clears throat> but obviously, like I said, it's all dependent on the outcome. If the outcome comes out negative, then definitely there's no opportunity to sell CAD. But if it comes out positive, then we will we'll, we'll actually be looking for these buying opportunities or buying scenarios, right? So also going to mark that so that we have it as part of our watch list. Uh, okay. If CAD were to come out dovish, uh, AUD CAD, let us let us check AUD CAD actually, because Australia is pretty strong. <clears throat> if we look at the PMI data, also for CAD, uh, <clears throat> now that I've just mentioned PMI data, we can see PMI data is actually neg in contraction, right? 46.6, 46.4, 47, 47. So it's below 50, right? Even the manufacturing is below 50. Go into the PMI tab actually and quickly see that as you can see relatively in contractive territory so canadian dollar like i said uh, i am expecting a, a dovish or, or a weakness of the canadian dollar but of course the supporting pillar for canada is oil right if they did not have oil then I'll, i would be looking to sell the canadian dollar honestly because that is what i'm getting from the data just looking at the data because understand it's interest rates it's inflation right interest rates which is the bond market and then inflation which is which, which drives the actual bond market right so that would that is my take there so let us look at <coughs> AUD CAD uh, AUD CAD oh it has been strengthening against the Canadian dollar. essentially Australian dollar has been strengthening uh, across the board but yeah so nothing on AUD CAD just looking if we were to actually sell not euro euro is actually weak maybe gbp cad no not really yeah there's there yeah, there's no there's really usd cad i wouldn't really go for usd cad as well unless if it's a it's if it's a day trade uh yeah no nah. so yeah we we'll just have to see all of what the outcome is right for 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 cad right when he in terms of the interest rate decision if the communication is dovish then of course we'll look to buy we'll look to sell uh but then there's no selling opportunities we'll also have to wait for four for also have to wait for like i said like i said we earlier we have to wait for 11 a.m to actually see how markets had developed by that point right so that is what we have there and then when it comes to euro actually i'll discuss because euro is on thursday i'll actually discuss euro today i'll actually do another video breakdown of euro because this video might end up being too long uh so i'll also do another video breakdown of euro and then of course we're going to be following the same a similar sequence right because remember we're trading currencies and cpi we need to understand inflation is what drives the bond markets the bond market is what drives the currency essentially the currency follows the bond market right but euro we're gonna uh, we're gonna do i'm gonna do a video on it or an explanation on it and what i'm expecting uh going into tomorrow right so just a quick recap like i said dollar there is risks on both on both sides but if inflation does come in below what is expected uh then definitely we could look to buy bitcoin right so let me go into our watch list <clears throat> go into the watch list real quick all of these guys should be here so okay i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna react because they shouldn't be under the bonds market here uh, so currency and let's say setups right so so you can move all of these guys to setups
this. Okay, so let us let us go back quickly uh, to the dollar because we had USD JPY there. Uh, yep, let us go back to indices. Had Nasdaq and S and P five. Then let us go back to New Zealand. NZD JPY and the CHF. Of course, it will like I said, it will be dependent on what we're getting from the actual result, right? Let's go back to watch list. Yeah, so NASDAQ <coughs> would be looking for that selling opportunity if data comes out positive for the dollar or inflation comes in greater. S&P 500 as well. Bitcoin would be looking to buy if inflation actually undershoots for the dollar or it comes out negative, then we'll be looking for that buying opportunity. And then CAT JPY, obviously be looking for depending on how on what on what we get from the data that is essentially how we, how we will look to play cad jpy right so usdchf obviously looking for buying opportunities uh depending on what we, on, on what the data says if the data is positive for the dollar we'll be looking to buy usdjpy if the data is positive for the dollar we'll be looking to buy as well uh, around these around these areas here uh and then of course cat jpy cat chf it's all dependent on what on what the on what on, on how the actual uh meeting comes out in terms of the communication as well as nzd chf and nzd uh jpy right so yeah that is that is pretty much the setups that we'll have going into the most uh or going to the high impact news that we'll be having today right so i hope it makes sense and of course if you have any questions feel free to ask in the group